Welcome to my lecture online. Here's another example where we may have to use an interesting trick to determine whether or not this infinite sum does converge or not. All right. What we could do is we could compare it to something that's very similar to that. Let's compare it to the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by the square root of n plus the square root of n. So instead of 5, we replace it by the square root of n. Now, what does that mean? Well, when n is a small number, the denominator will be smaller and the fraction will be larger. But as n becomes large, the denominator here will become larger and the fraction will become smaller. So from the point down, when n becomes 25 or larger than 25, this becomes a smaller quantity than this, so the infinite sum will be larger for this than it is for that. So we can then write that this will be larger than that for all values over 25, and of course there's an infinite number of them, so the sum of these will be greater than the sum of those. Now, if we can show that this does not converge, then we know that this does not converge either because we know it's greater. So, Let's add those together and see what we get. This can be written as the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by 2 times the square root of n, which can be written as 1 over 2 times the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by 2 to the 1 half power. And of course, oop, not 2, that should be n to the 1 half power. n to the 1 half power. All right. Now, we realize that this, that looks a lot like the p-series. Well, that's exactly the p-series. And we know that the exponent is less than 1. Since the 1 half is less than 1, we therefore know that this series will diverge. And since this infinite sum diverges, we know that this diverges as well. And again, the comparison test often is a good way to go, just like in this example. And that's how it's done.